am visiting the Mediterranean island of Malta, the only nation ever to be awarded the George Cross. The GC, as it is better known, is usually awarded to individuals, both civilians and those in the armed forces, for quite exceptional bravery that is not in the presence of the enemy. In the case of Malta, however, there was a very noticeable enemy in the form of Italian and German military aggression from 1940 to 1942. This year marks the 80th anniversary of the award of the GC to Malta on April 15, 1942. And this proud nation will commemorate the occasion by remembering those who gave their lives so the island would not fall under the yoke of fascists and Nazis. The Second World War, which had broken out in September 1939, was almost a year old when Malta's struggle for survival began in the late spring of 1940. Si carica una bomba di grossissimo calibro destinata alle opere militari e portuali di Malta. As early as June 11, Italian bombers made eight raids on Malta and soon the raids intensified. Although small in size, the then British fortress island of Malta had huge strategic importance as a route to North Africa and the Middle East. By the new year of 1941, the attacks on Malta involved the German Luftwaffe too. Early in 1942, Hitler decided it was time to end Malta's resistance once and for all, using the Luftwaffe extensively to try to bomb the island into submission. By this point, attempts by the British to reinforce the island with significant supplies had failed, leaving the Maltese inhabitants and the garrison close to starvation and with ammunition and fuel supplies badly depleted. I asked Lawrence Mitzi, whose family lived near the docks in Grand Harbor, to describe the scenes in 1942 when he was just 10 years old. We slept under a table. They told, they told us, sleep under a table if you hear the, the, uh, the, 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 the sirens or whatever, you see. I suffered more from hunger than from bombs. I used to cry. I remember one day I, I was crying and didn't want to go to school. My mother said, why? I said, look, I've got ache, stomach ache. I'm too hungry, but I can't help you, you see. And then there was an old woman living next to us. She said, why is he crying? And my mother said, he doesn't want to go to, sc to school. Oh, hey, he's a good boy, but he loves school, yes. But he's got nothing to eat. So she, she said, go right, wait for me. And she went and g gave me a, a bit of bread, you see. I took it to school and I was, you know, <laughs> surrounded by all the boys, they wanted it. You know? As the crisis worsened, the more people were forced to live underground or in makeshift shelters for safety. King George VI bestowed the George Cross on the island, the first ever collective award of the medal, which had been instituted two years earlier. A letter from the king read, to honour her brave people, I award the George Cross to the island fortress of Malta to bear witness to a heroism and devotion that will long be famous in history. By the summer of 1942, nearly three years into the Second World War, the result of the greatest conflict the world has ever seen hung in the balance. Winston Churchill, the British Prime Minister, then ordered Operation Pedestal, effectively a huge convoy of ships to save Malta at all costs. Malta was resupplied and the island survived to fight on. To Londonderry, to Murmansk and to Malta, under a hail of bombs and through the wolf packs, the Atlantic convoys got through. The GC awarded five months earlier was officially presented to Malta on September 13, 1942, 
and it toured the island soon afterwards for the local population to admire and enjoy. By November, the siege of Malta was over after more than 3,000 bombing raids. During my visit, I was delighted to meet Charles de Bono, the curator of the National War Museum. Uh, thank you very much, Charles. This is really impressive. There have only been uh, three collective George Crosses issued for bravery, and Malta is one of them. And often I've reflected on what the people of Malta must have gone through during those dark days of uh, World War II and the bravery of the citizens. This, for me, is a very proud moment. Thank you, Thanks. indeed. I have long had a soft spot for Malta, and my respect for the courage of the islanders 80 years ago is immense. And Malta's rich history is one of the main reasons that I'm such a frequent visitor. Before I left Malta, I wanted to visit one more location, the War Memorial in Valletta, which commemorates the island's dead from two world wars. It was a fitting way for me to pay my respects to the bravery of those who contributed to making Malta the world's first and only George Cross Island.